Hey, great to see you. Welcome. Today I will show you step by step how I created a spring dream from a better showcase using Dixiebel Terra clay paints, stencils, decoupage, wood you bend, transfers, and a little bit of hand painting. So stay tuned. To prepare, I first cleaned the whole project thoroughly with Dixiebel White Lightning, as I always do. For the doors, I chose the centerpiece Woody Band 1323.26 from Woody Band, and the 26 actually stands for the diameter of this ornament. Since it is quite large, I warmed it up well on my small griddle first, and also with my heat gun so um, that it becomes nice and flexible. I use tight one quick and thick adhesive to apply it to uh, the door. This has the advantage that it also has good initial adhesion on vertical surfaces without the ornament slipping off immediately. I thoroughly coat the back with the glue and then press it firmly onto the door. Heat it up again so that it becomes nice and flexible again and press down firmly, especially on the edges, so that it snuggles onto the surface. I removed the excess glue with a damp cloth, uh, a baby wipe and in the areas where I can't get to with the cloth I use a damp brush. For this project I'm working with Dixiebel's Terra uh, Clay Artisan Paints and on the first coat I use Galaxy, Melorite, Pistachio, Daffodil and Prairie Dawn. On the first layer I usually check out if I like the color combination, if not then I can still change that in the second coat. Today I use um, a natural bristle brush from Dixiebel, the La Petite for painting. Um, to be more precise, um, the La Petite has 50-50 natural bristles and synthet synthetic bristles, but it basically behaves like a natural bristle brush, which is perfect for the terra clay paints. I start from the bottom with the darkest color, the Galaxy, and get lighter towards the top with Melorite and Pistachio. And with the Daffodil and Prairie Dawn, I set a few lighter accents. Actually, on the second coat, I left the Prairie Dawn out because um, I didn't like, like it to take away the brightness of the colors. Basically, I am continuing the same thing on the top of that uh, glass cabinet, um, just to give it like, um, like the same look all over. To give the whole thing even more depth and texture, I'll do some ray stenciling. For that, I used part of the tile stencil from Bells and Whistles for the frame and the tea towel stencil for the lower side area. And um, I use the terra clay paint Bougain Villiers. I'm sorry if I pronounce that wrong. I never get it right. My apologies. I never learn it. But even so, that's the one, the paint color I used, and I mix it with the texture additive from Dixiebel, the sea spray. I always mix by feel. Um, it can be a bit thicker on this project for my feel, so um, I can build up a little uh, nice texture and uh, to apply. Um, the whole stuff, I use the Singer Magic uh, silicone tool from Bells and Whistles. The sea spray comes with a measuring scoop and um, Dixiebel recommends to use two measuring scoops for eight ounces of paint, but um, everything's allowed um, what you want to do. I mean, you, you have to know which uh, consistency you would like to have for your project, so everything works. The nice thing with sea spray is that you basically can add it to um, any paint color and it doesn't change your paint color, which is absolutely fantastic.
around that keyhole, I could not really get that um, stencil flat onto the surface. So the stenciling got a little messy, um, which is absolutely no problem because um, I wasn't going for a for a clean stenciling anyway. But uh, what I've basically uh, am doing is uh, taking the biggest mess, so to say, off just with a little, a tiny little spoon. So that's fine. You can do that. Before I carry on with painting, um, I let the, the sea spray, basically the ray stenciling, dry um, nicely. But you can see um, very well that uh, the colors are drying lighter than uh, they are when they are wet. That's basically the character of the terra clay paints. How you can revive them, we're gonna go or we're gonna get to later. So with this project, I'm basically layering um, different paint colors and going to reveal some of them and some of them will be stayed hidden. But um, that's basically the idea behind the whole project. So and therefore, I'm going to use again the Bougainvillea. There we have it again. My apologies, I still can't pronounce it. I added some accents on the edges of the, of the um, lower part and also onto the beautiful woody band ornaments. Now comes the next layer and I'm basically using the same colors as I did on the first layer. Um, the only thing I left out was basically the Prairie Dawn. As I said before, this was uh, taking too much away from the brightness of the whole of the whole color sheen. The Terra Clay paints from Dixie Bell are water-based and the special thing about those paints is that uh, they can be reactivated with water at any time as long they are not sealed. Whether it's uh, 24 hours or 12 months, that doesn't make a difference. So that's a super effect if you want to continue working on it and change certain areas, whatever you have in mind. Also, this paint is not self-leveling and that means that you can easily um, apply texture with, with your brush. It is a real artisan paint, so absolutely fantastic. I love it. So over the um, raised stencils, I'm also using, after I applied the second coat, uh, a dry brush technique, which basically means that uh, you hardly have any paint on, on your brush. And I'm basically taking the, um, after, well, I'm taking the contrasting green and brush it very slightly over the edges of the raised stencil to define the edges better. So whenever you've reached a stage where you're happy with your finish um, of the terra clay paints, I would recommend to give it a seal in between. Use one of the water-based sealers so you can basically paint over it to make some more changes afterwards. I'm using the um, terra tough here um, and terra tough dries in a satin finish and you can really see how it brings back the colors.
Okay, let's get to the inner values of this uh, showcase. Um, here I first set a base with uh, the Terra Clay Paint Galaxy and I used the Premium Chip brush for the corners and the Big Daddy brush from Bells and Bizzles for the rest of the area because it's big and it goes quick. It's big and it goes quick. So, and then I am applying the Dixieville Crackle. This is a, a crackling medium and um, I'm going to apply it in an irregular pattern across the top. So I don't want to have the cracks appear at the end in a regular pattern. So that's the reason I'm going in a, in a crosshatch over the whole thing. The crackle um, is a bit thick and vicious and uh, especially on a vertical surface, it tends to form droplets during the drying process. That's the reason I'm keeping an eye on it and uh, use my French tip brush in between the drying process to stipple down the appearing drops. So uh, don't worry, you're not uh, disturbing the crackling um, afterwards. This is just making sure that you're not having like uh, blobs and drops all over your project. When a crackle is dry, you can paint the second color over it. I chose the fluff from the chalk mineral paint series as I wanted to put decoupage paper over it. I like to have a white base. The crackles are showing up pretty quickly after you apply the second coat of paint and um, this is such a cool process and I absolutely love this product. For this project, I've chosen one of the Postshark Deluxe Decoupage Papers and it is the uh, Utopia and it is actually designed from Jonathan Mark Mendes. As the decoupage paper is a little smaller than the background, I like to have ripped edges because I have to blend it in. That was my cat, I'm sorry. She just woke up. <laughs> So as a decoupage medium, I'm going to use the Post Chalk Infuser, which you usually use, usually use for the um, pigments from Post Chalk. But um, it is also perfect for decoupaging and it's perfect for sealing your project. And it is also uh, suitable for outdoors. So with the um, larger decoupage papers, I like to work in sections. So I'm laying down um, a layer of the infuser and then I adhere the decoupage paper and I move my way down towards the bottom section by section. I'm using a squeegee with a felt line to push out the wrinkles and bubbles. And here you can really see the crackle effect behind the decoupage paper. So now we come to the underwater area basically and for that I firstly put down um, some blue colors, the blue moon and the cerulean blue and blend it a little bit together. When the paint has dried, uh, I am working a re reflection into the lighter area of the paint. It's basically supposed to look at the end like um, when you're underwater and you're looking towards the surface and you have this reflection of the sun in there. Different shades of blues I basically describe as my brush a laying A and blending the colors together.
So I also still have to work the decoupage into the background and for that I am preparing myself a couple of colors on my palette. I only will need a very little but uh, I'll have to mix like different grains and shades and things like that to match the decoupage paper to the background. And therefore I'm taking the malachite, I'm taking onyx, I'm taking daffodil, pistachio, bougainvillea, elderberry, moonbeam and also some blues, the uh, blue moon and the cerulean blue. I start off with uh, giving the background a little bit more color and to do that I dilute some of the colors with water and to very del delicately bring in a slight sunset and a few subtle clouds. When I'm finished with my blending in with tear clay paints, I'm going to seal the whole thing again to make sure I'm not accidentally reactivating something. Also, I would like to apply a transfer into the waterline, which is the balance transfer by uh, Bells and Whistles. And when you apply a transfer over the terra seal paints, it is recommended to seal the paints first. Make sure when you apply transfer and which paints you're using, it is different from one paint to the other if you have to seal it or if you don't have to seal it. Transfers are wafer thin self adhesive foils basically that can be applied to almost any project using the transfer stick which comes with it. As always, I rub the edges in with my finishing pad at the end to make sure that those halos disappear into the background. And this time I'm using the Easy Peasy Spray Wax, which is also water based, um, with it to make sure it glides a little easier over the transfer and is not that abrasive. 
So at the end, um, the background was bigger than than I actually thought, <laughs> and I didn't really want to, you know, have like thousands of uh, goldfish swimming in the water at the bottom. And uh, as this project basically was done live, I had a viewer recommending to get some stones. So I don't know a transfer which carries stones, um, so I was hand painting them. I first, uh, firstly sketched them out with some with a chalk stick, roughly where I thought I wanted to have them before I came in with my paints. Um, I started basically with the darkest color and then set accents with the lighter colors to, you know, to give it a bit more interest and like shadows and broken edges. And I choose the green colors because this is like a lake scene and I like to have like this algae look to it. Um, I like it. I hope you do too. I'm just realizing you're still with me. Thank you for that. I'm happy that you're still, still, still here. So um, I don't think I've introduced myself yet. My name is Angela and uh, I'm the owner and creati creative mind behind Elfen und Helden. And um, well, if you like, you can subscribe to my channel. I would be very happy if you do. And I would be very happy if you check in with me more often. So the lower part wasn't in very good shape on the inside, so I decided to put a layer of paint in there and I've used the Lani's Lagoon from the Terra Clay Paints and I decided that the doors will get um, some patterned stripes. Therefore I laid down a base with elderberry and um, sealed that to make sure I'm not reactivating it with the uh, stripes I put on top and let it dry. And the stripes, I lay down my stripes. I use I use painter's tape and I also use the painter's tape as spacers for the stripes. So the stripes are being painted in Lani's Lagoon and um, I let it dry and I'm, I'm not taking the painter's tape off. This is going to stay on there. And then I'm going to use the stencil Moroccan from Bells and Whistles. I take the, the bell brush from um, Dixie Bell and I take just very little paint of the elderberry on it and I basically stenciling my way along the stripes.
So the stencils have a continuous pattern. So basically, if it doesn't fit onto your uh, project, it's too small, you can uh, align the stencil uh, up again and continue the pattern. It's just that easy. It's time for the reveal, guys. Just check that out. I love this part. This is so satisfying. Just tell me if this is satisfying. <laughs> So um, yeah, that's that's um, that's pattern stripes. Ta-da! Okay, um, after it has dried, I decided to sand it down a little bit just to um, make it a little smoother and to take the contrast a little away. And after that, I um, de-dusted it and sealed it again with the Terra Seal, which is like got like a flat finish. Cute chubby feet got some love as well. They've already been painted on the outside with the galaxy and on the inside with the pistachio. And I've used from the Winter Metallics the Deep Woods, which is a gorgeous color, and painted it solid on the outside. And on the inside, I sprayed it a little bit with water, took a paper towels and towel and um, dabbed it off a little bit so that the pistachio was revealed back. The top of my pieces of my projects is most of the time the last bit I'm doing because I'm basically deciding towards the end um, how I would like to integrate that into my into the whole look of the, the project. And for this one, I thought it's going to be lovely if, if the wood is going to stay wood. So therefore, I'm using the No Paint Gel Stain from Dixiebel and I chose the Espresso, a nice, dark, lovely color. No paint gel stain is oil based and should be used outdoors or in a well ventilated area. It's, it's a bit smelly. So if you're a sensitive, feel free to wear a mask. The gloves prevent you from getting your hands dirty. Um, I prefer to use the applicator pad or the buffing pad for application. The no paint gel stain is super easy to use and also covers wonderfully unsightly, un unsightly areas. You can seal it with one of the water-based top coats also, but you should wait at least three to five days, rather five um, or even longer, to make sure that the no paint gel stain has dried well. Oil-based, it is oil-based, that's the reason why. So, um, and that's also the reason it needs a little longer to dry. On the ornaments, I set um, a few highlights with the Tixibel Gilding Max in Bronzer, and then the whole piece was all done. I'd like to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and maybe it inspired you a little. Um, I hope so very much. And uh, I'm definitely in the mood for spring now. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments. And also if you have some questions, just let me know. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you soon. Ta-da, bye-bye.